Hey, how's it going, you guys? Welcome back to some more Hello Lady. We are in Tamao Akihito's route right now, which is exciting, and it's already been a great start. Like, I've really been enjoying it more than I thought I would, considering I don't really care for her character as much as some of the others. But I gotta say, starting off strong, really like it. And we just kind of, like, cut off in the middle of something that was kind of important, too. So I just want to continue right where we left off, and hopefully it'll continue being good. A shadow slid through the academy at night. Its silhouette resembled an agile beast, but it was hard to spot when mixed with the stationary shadows. It was Tamao Akihito, and she had been sneaking past security. She stopped at a spot next to the school building that no cameras reached. Remembering what happened that morning made her sigh. She was a little worried, but as promised, Narita hadn't revealed her secret. In fact, he just used it to crack a joke, which didn't sit right with her, but she could ignore it. Her chest pounded, she put her hand on her mouth and pondered her predicament. And finding out her secret was an even bigger problem than she'd initially thought. Narita was a weirdo, after all. She couldn't count on him to cooperate, nor did she want to. Tao had done fine by herself thus far. She was a model, lonely soldier. However, her thoughts have been going in circles since noon. If she didn't have to cooperate with him, she could have just refused. Sure, she wanted to keep him from doing anything weird, but that felt like an excuse. After all, she had the option of silencing him for good. Why did she decide to trust the promise of a man like him? She didn't understand. Was she just confused because he was the oddest man she'd ever met? All that aside, there was something worth celebrating. Her true self, which had to stay hidden at all costs, remained a secret to the crowns. <laughs> The real Tamao Akihito lived in a completely different world than those girls. There was something else to consider. Taigi Mikado, the new student who joined right after Mitori left. He was the son of Chairman Kurofune Mikado, which meant that he was no normal student. She felt like Taigi had been watching her. It, almost, it seemed almost like he suspected her of hiding something. Taigi also kept an eye on Narita through the gaze he aimed at him felt somewhat different. Whatever the reason, she didn't have much time left. Her wounds still pained her, but she had to dig out the Academy secrets as soon as possible. That was why she ventured out in her school uniform. However, she was willing to go the whole way. She moved her hand away from her mouth and formed a fist. She just remembered that Narita licked that hand earlier in that day. What kind of person did that anyways? Upon remembering the sensation of his tongue, she turned red in the face. She shook her head and chased away those unnecessary thoughts away. After confirming that no one else was around, she ran off towards the windowless building. When Tamao dashed off, her surroundings had been completely empty. However, as soon as she left, a shadow slinked off a column near the garden, revealing a certain man. It was I, Shinri Narita. I had secretly followed her, but she put some major distance between us in the blink of an eye. But I hadn't done that, so now Tamao is dashing about. Not only was she still hurt, but she wasn't in the right state of mind either. She hadn't even noticed that I was following her. Despite last night's events, the ominous forest surrounding the tower hadn't upped its security. Needless to say, it was because reinforcements would have merely gotten in the way. The area was already under the protection of the mystical forest, the mysterious marksman. It was a wall that turned the tower into an impenetrable fortress. She crouched in the shadows like a high-strung bow and prepared to break through the security. Suddenly. Konbanwa. <laughs> I love the way he said that. Konbanwa. <laughs> I'd expected as much, but she noticed me before I even touched her shoulder. She jumped about four meters away and looked at me, clearly shocked. <laughs> Oh uh, yes, summer strolls through a forest with a marksman who will shoot you. 
because obviously, like he said, you're not in your right state of mind. You're going to get shot again, and this time you're going to actually die if I don't help you. She glared at me like it was a piece of gum stuck to her shoe. Smell looked charming even when mad. She waved me off and tried to walk away, but I grabbed her arm to stop her. She tried to argue but simply hung her head and bit her lip instead. Voicing her shame, she clenched her fist so tight that I expected it to bleed. After Tamao calmed down, we left the forest. However, instead of the dorm, we chose to head somewhere outside the academy. A partner as capable as Tamao made it exiting through the route I'd used with Eru a simple matter. So we can talk freely out here. <laughs> we stood on a road some distance away from the academy. It was an open space, so if anyone approached, we'd know it. Say nothing, I looked up at the moonlit clouds above and waited for her to speak. She mirrored my actions at first, but eventually she broke the silence. Hey, I thought we agreed not to peer into each other. So だな。確証があるわけではないが、おおよそは分かっていると思ってもらっても結構だ。なんだと? <笑> Ah oh, yes, this looks like the greatest poker face in the world. In four-fifths of a second, her expression shifted a number of times, providing insight of her thought process. Hmm. <laughs> She leveled an intense glare at me, and for whatever reason, it felt intoxicating. In fact, if I waited long enough, they may have even turned into a form of pleasure. After enjoying her gaze for a moment, I presented my case. つまり学園と良好な関係とは言えない組織の総区というわけだ。目的は学園に隠されている秘密の追求、あるいは秘密の入手といったところか。個人的な見解で言わせてもらえるなら、前者だろう。根拠。人選だ。産業スパイの類い
殺すもバラすも止めるも埋めるも何もかもあっという間だそれっきりで後腐れもない She wasn't lying. To Tamao, killing was as simple as brushing her teeth. Where had Tamao hidden this cold, blood stained murderer? Yeah, I don't think anyone could control him, honestly. He's a pretty loose cannon. She moved her head in about in thought, then relaxed and nodded. Most likely. After thinking about the situation and sighing, Tamao spoke up. Yeah, you wouldn't make a very good maid, honestly. Hmm. That explained why the attack on Saku never made it to the news. Because the attack と話の早いやつだよ。ま、そういうわけで、俺は学生としてここにやってきたって。目的のために潜入したにしては、学友たちとも親しんでいる様子だったんだね。うるせえ。マジんでる方が怪しまれないだろうが。玉尾の顔を
Her innocent mind did not suit someone sent to infiltrate the academy at all. Oh, okay, Narita. I could have lied, but Tamao was so straightforward that I wanted to be honest with her. Honestly, the strangest thoughts kept flowing into my head. <laughs> that just, huh? <laughs> After she repeated that word, her brain caught up to the situation and she froze. She turned as red as a raging fire. The color even reached up to her ears. Dang, okay, that's smooth. I'd finally realized I was quite serious about her. How absurd and foolish. They may that might have that may have been a natural emotion for a person, but I was an inhuman avenger. Plus the maiden who had enchanted me was someone who had the potential to end up as an enemy. And yet, oh my, there was no turning back. <laughs> I love the way she talks sometimes. I just like listening to the Japanese audio and, and I just have no idea what she's saying. Even though I don't I don't know Japanese, but I definitely couldn't tell what she's saying. I placed my hand on my chest. My hands had lost everything. My entire clan had died, yet I'd survived for no apparent reason. I'd crawled forward using rageous fuel and stood up due to the immense hatred in my heart. However, those same hands suddenly felt a certain warmth. Oh, frick, we're getting flashbacks. Let's go. Okay, so we got Ruri, we got Soriko, and then we got Taigi. I reminisced about the sky I'd gazed up at long ago. How strange, after so long I started to feel a most human emotion once more. No, this human heart could not be cast aside. Revenge was a solemn prayer for the dead, something that only humans could enact. If I clung to sweet, sweet hatred, I, I was no better than the traitors, a beast in the hide of men. The unexpected situation had thrown her for a loop. A rather delicious reaction. If the night wind hadn't cooled them off, my cheeks would have warmed. I took a step forward, closing the distance between us. Like, I understand this is her route, so obviously, like, we're gonna direct our feelings towards her. But it's so weird, like, seeing him just focus on one girl, because I feel like he's... You know, as as he's been described as a womanizer before, he just kind of likes everybody a little bit, you know? よく考えて答えてほしい。嫌っているというなら、これ以上何もしない。だって、そうでないなら、私はきっと食べらわない。嫌いではないぞ。本当に全然嫌いじゃない。むしろ。Dang, okay, we're just going straight for it. Like, okay, let's do it. I drew closer and forced her to face me. <laughs> Tamal found herself unable to look me in the eye, so she attempted to escape. She seemed so flustered that her usual physical prowess had vanished. She failed to even stand straight, and so I held onto her shoulder so hard it might have actually hurt. It was night, and we were under a bright moon. It was a world of our own, and I did nothing but look at her. Unable to bear my gaze, she looked in random directions. <laughs> After letting out that strange, meek response, she gave in and looked back at me. Her bewitching lips shook due to the tension in the air. Come on, Tamao. 
You're not this dense. You're the person who always speaks their mind, always says it straightforward, doesn't like to beat around the bush. What do you mean, feelings about what? She reflexively tried to get away again, but I didn't let her. She fell silent as though some bread had got stuck in her throat. I waited without looking away from her for even a second. The wind whipped as a swift speed, so three clouds had already passed by the moon above. The fourth cloud that came was large enough to cover the whole thing, granting us a moment of merciful darkness. Tamao's expression became impossible to make out, and she let out a whisper. Her silent voice seemed extremely clear to me. She just repeated herself, but her red visage and her voice, which quivered like a newborn deer's, revealed exactly how she felt. Warm joy filled my heart. It felt much like the sweetness of a piece of candy in my mouth. A taste of sin and foolishness, surely. I closed my eyes and savored the sweet, forbidden feeling, and by the time I reopened them, the clouds had cleared. Flushed all over, biting down on her lip, the moonlight let me see Tamao clearly. I gave in to the urge and pulled her into me. Dang. Our lips joined. Hers were both tough and so soft you think they might melt. My senses were overwhelmed by Tamao and Tamao alone. The scent of her hair, which came from the expensive soap she used, mixed with the bittersweet feminine smell from her neck. I heard her lightly moan in surprise and squirm, uncertain how to react. Her cheeks felt soft and warm, and her silky hair danced in the wind. After feeling her with all my senses, I slowly backed away. It looked like she was still processing everything that had happened. Yeah, she does kind of act cute sometimes. It's nice that she's like this really strong person, but then you kind of break down that mold, that barrier. And like she's actually really like genuine and kind of nervous about things like this. Her first kiss, I assumed. That was nice. That was a good first kiss. I really liked that. That was nice. She hung her head and shivered. Her clenched hands turned pale as she grabbed her skirt and wrinkled it. Her curses made me worry that I'd upset her. She hid in her face, so I snuck a peek at it. Luckily, it ended up being absurdly easy to tell that she was smiling. Her joy honestly felt even infectious. The moonlight, sh moonlight showering her made me want to keep gazing at her, but it was far too late in the night for that. Samal returned to her senses, looked up at the position of the moon to calculate the time, and quickly understood what I was saying. Then, she turned all red and opened her mouth once more. A car approached us, traveling down the road in the dark, and the headlights eventually hit our position. However, when they did, they found no trace of even a single soul. I returned to my room without anyone noticing. Tamal must have done the same. I had enough trust in her skills to know she'd be successful. Then I took a seat, realized that my day was done, and cleared up my senses. After confirming that there was no one nearby, I opened an envelope. I'd found it in the dorm's mailbox when I went down to the living room. It was from my dearest maid. It was a feminine pink and had an odd seal affixed to it, 
that looked like a round green orb with limbs striking a pose. The very same design as the odd plush toy that she'd given me when I'd moved here. It suited her taste perfectly. ご主人様、良き学園生活を楽しんでおられるでしょうか。独善的で存在、身勝手な態度を直す機会になれたと、医師は願っております。おとといは車を出してもらい、身の回りの土地を一回りしてまいりました。高楽日和の日で、運と
Can we just open the door on her? Almost overwhelmed by feeling she refused to acknowledge, she screamed and ran away like a rabbit. I walked into the living room at the usual time. Almost everyone was there and breakfast had already been served. No, nothing at all. Nothing happened last night either. Don't ask. Only she and Taigi were missing. Eru looked up at the second floor, spotting Tamao as she walked down the stairs. Her shoulders were slumped for some reason. My greeting made her jump back three meters all the way to the second floor, but she failed to stick the landing and tumble down to us. <laughs> She's like, let me let me record this real quick. The act produced quite a sound, not surprising considering the impressive fall. I mean, I'm always down here in the morning. She stood up and said that in a monotone voice. Super sucks. The girls looked at her with strange expressions as Tamao walked over to her seat in a somewhat robotic manner. This was bad. Had she overheated because of last night's events? She was so pure, the mere sight of her threatened to make me break it out into a wide grin. However, I quickly realized it was best to treat her with caution until she calmed down. I had to act normal. After she took a seat and froze like a statue, an awkward air permeated the room. Yes, very fine morning. It's It's been a great morning. The other man in the dorm belatedly walked down the stairs. The awkward mood continued, but no one wanted to question Tamao further, so we all began eating breakfast. After breakfast, we left for class. I, I worried about her, so I decided to accompany her, but she simply acted strange the whole time, and that served to solidify my concerns. She got ahead of me one moment, only to fall behind the next, and aside from that, she swapped sides often as she followed me with awkward movements. She reminded me of a Maltese dog, which I found quite charming. We etolas all took seats in the back row. Miss Tokino conducted the first lesson of the day. The class had nearly 100 students from all years. The academy mostly had specialized classes with a limited number of students, so this was a particularly large class. Yeah, I think normally there's like, what, 50? So that's like double. I will say, Eru has some great follow-up comments. What language is that? <laughs> I don't know, Soriko. You should understand best what she's talking about, because somebody, you specifically, had the same feelings for him not that long ago. Yeah, there was a lot more going on there. <laughs> Training. Okay. Yeah, I too like to train how to fall downstairs. Do it all the time. Tamao tried to act normal, but everyone could tell that something was off. Unable to calm down, she looked around like a headless chicken. That must be a part of her training, too. 
Dang, you know it's bad when you're being called a weirdo by Eru. あのね、昔にわちの人から聞いたことがあるんだけど、戦争を使い続けるとてな震えるようになるんだって。どうして今そんな話を? Ah, uh, yes, under the floorboards, exactly. I wondered who they belonged to. No, it wasn't even a question that she silenced and disposed of those who discovered her secret. Not that I wanted that to be true. <laughs> and then Saku's taking it very seriously. <laughs> Apparently, Tamao hadn't even listened to us. She suddenly jumped up like there was a spring in her chair. The girls urged her to continue, but she had trouble speaking. The blush on her neck had spread all the way to her ears. After shaking her head, she swung her fist to gather her resolve. Oh no. You gave out your secret to Mao. You gave out the suspense of why you're acting weird. Huh? Oh, so this is what happened in episode 6, Soriko. That's that's what happened. We were talking and having a good time, getting to know each other, learning our backstories, and then you let us see where our feelings took us. And we all know where that went. I, I didn't show the scene because I wasn't sure if I was allowed to, but uh, she certainly knows what she's talking about here. I'll say that. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty stalkerish, I won't lie. But for better or worse, a man broke into the awkward girl's talk Tamao had initiated. Taiki casually walked into the classroom. A maid walked by his side, carrying his bag. How come he gets to have his maid? I understand she's a maid also probably for Kurofune, but like still, like this is the bull crap that we can't have Hishia here, but you can have your maid. You already know his maid is like gonna kick butt too. Like I I'm guaranteeing you guys we're gonna fight her at some point. She looks like she'd probably kick some butt. If you've ever seen Black Lagoon, then you know what some kick butt maids look like, okay? After he joined the Etwalas, I realized that Taiki had quite a high-level fetish. Unless it was a public setting, he had that made with him at all times. Yes, indeed a man of good culture. I like it. Our beloved insignia looked at us like we were gum stuck to her shoes, but we were completely serious. <laughs> Yeah, that's such a stalkerish move to have a maid follow somebody. No, you can love someone without being creepy, okay? You don't need to follow them around. I'm sure once they open up to you and get comfortable, they'll start talking about what they do day to day. You'll learn that stuff. It doesn't matter. You don't need to follow them everywhere. And then Soriko's justifying him. It's like, yeah, I get his point. He's saying, oh, I love them enough to, you know, want to know everything about them, right? But th that could still be weird, right? I'm not in the wrong saying that. Thank you, Arrow. I'm glad at least you have some common sense. 
The relations between the crowns and Taigi seemed complicated. I'd heard they'd known each other long before he joined the Etwalas. Saku, for example, was among the first of the Academy's students. And though Taigi wasn't a student himself, he had spent much time on campus. It wasn't strange that they were acquainted. Though even though even they were confused by his sudden enrollment, it might have been akin to having a neighbor suddenly become family. Also, he was Chairman Mikado's son, so that made it seem like he had some ulterior motive. Yeah, I think he does. And that made the situation even more confusing. However, Saku did her best to perform the insignia's duties. She did her best to fix the awkward mood and help her friend. It felt quite pathetic and made me want to cry, though. Arrow, you know, you have some good conversation, like, you have some good things to add to a conversation, right? And then you have this, and it makes me wonder, why? Why, why did you feel the need to bring that up? Like, what made you want to say that, okay? Like, do you play too many video games? Are you playing too many visual novels? A little too meta for me. Tranquility and warmth. Unlike when I was acting to fulfill my goals, I felt like I was wasting my time. It was a luxurious moment I'd rarely experienced over the past seven years. Feeling that and other similar things, I watched the girls interact until class began. Lunch break. I thought of eating with the other etoiles, but Tamao ran off the moment class ended. She'd acted strange throughout the whole lesson, and it even gotten so bad that Miss Tokino asked if she felt unwell. Zoriko did her best to cover for her, but she often overdid it. It ended with Tamao becoming a ventriloquist dummy, and Eru secretly taking photos with her camera. The whole thing had been so fun that I almost burst out, burst out into laughter a few times. However, Saku stopped me. How, you ask? By silencing me with the most murderous of glares, of course. I felt like she blamed me for everything, which seemed both shocking and uncalled for to me. <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, you are the reason she's acting weird. It's not, it's not strange at all. Sure, I was one of the reasons for her odd behavior, but I certainly never expected Tamao's excessive reactions. Yeah, th that's true. I mean, she's responsible for her own actions at the end of the day. I found Tamao out in the garden as I walked back from the cafeteria. Looking quite weary, she slept, slept on the lawn and looked up at the clouds with an exhausted expression on her face. Eru stealthily snuck up on her like a carnivorous fish. <laughs> She's just taking pictures. <laughs> Tamao attempted to jump up to her feet upon hearing the sound of the shutter. I like how she immediately notices me instead of Eru just taking pictures. Confusing Arrow for me, she leaped rather high, but she failed to land properly and fell. Oh, she didn't even notice me. That was just Arrow. I wanted an answer to that question as well. How could she have possibly mistaken Arrow for me? That aside, that looked painful. Shut up, Soriko. What do you. Just shut up. I don't have I don't have words for you right now. Oh yeah, she's entertaining for sure. Oh yeah, Eru lowered her stance and hurried over to sit out like a spider. Eru pointed at me, making me the center of attention. Oh gosh, here we go. The few younger girls who heard her looked at me in despair like they had just stepped on a mine. After about three seconds, everyone shifted their gazes back to Tamao. Narita? I know, Sokka would be really shocked by that. The hesitant question made Tamao s sweat and turn stiff like someone had just pulled a knife on her. No, 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 no,
Well, Tamau, I hate to tell you, but this is not helping your case at all. Like, you pretty much just gave it away. You're an open book right now. She shook her head and denied it so desperately that she started speaking in a monotone voice. You too? <laughs> oh, Soriko, you cracked me up. Our dear insignia collapsed and grabbed her head. I looked back at them, finally realizing that I was indeed involved with their conversation, and blinked once. Oh, you're straight up saying it. You know, I respect this, Narita. I mean, you're you're not making this story drag on too long. <laughs> Tamau was like, shut up, you idiot. Tamau got up and closed it on me like a bullet. Then she grabbed my hand and pulled me out of the garden. Yeah, you're not making your case very well. If you didn't want to seem like you liked me, you're certainly not helping this at all. We left a trail of dust behind as we rushed off. Well, now it's out. We don't have to hide it. Tamau stopped once we got a good distance away from the others. I felt like all the dragging had extended my arm. I chose not to point out the fact that she was the one who appeared insane all morning. And this is why we respect you, Narita. You say the truth, even if it sounds really dumb at the moment. Indeed, my feelings for her were very real. I had no idea that the hateful Avenger Shinri Narita still had something like that in him, a heart that could love. Even if it was sinful and would surely become a weakness. Heat filled her face once more. I almost spotted steam rising off of her reddened forehead. Well, that probably wasn't the way that she'd want to, you know, reveal that information. Let's just say that. It wasn't an ideal situation. Quite possibly embarrassing. I wasn't the type to read instructions, so I still didn't know the Academy's rules very well. But from what I could tell, though, traveling in and out of the Academy was strictly forbidden. What went on with inside the walls wasn't so strictly governed. Of course, you had to keep it within the boundaries of nobility. However, during my nightly expeditions, I spotted a few couples having a very good time. Oh, I wonder what that is, Narita. Tamal let out a strange scream. Tamau started right <laughs> writhing, so I quickly pulled her close to me. What are you talking about, Tamau? She turned all red and shook her head, but also closed her eyes and s stuck out her lips. <laughs> <laughs> Her actions worried me. Could I have done anything to fix her odd behavior? Probably not. Uh-oh. Okay, are, are they trying to apply it to the Academy? I think it's actually Eru. Tamao's expression turned blank. When it mattered, Tamao Akahita automatically changed her state of mind. No matter what thoughts she had in her head, she instantly shifted into the mindset of a murderer. 
Okay, so it actually is. Interesting. To keep us from being overheard, I whispered those words into her ear while pretending to embrace her. The students weren't informed of the fact, of course, but the academy was being observed in a variety of ways. A whopping 200 HMI studied there. There were both possibilities and dangerous bombs. The tall walls around the academy served to keep the dangers inside just as much as they kept enemies out. I didn't find any listening devices or cameras in the dorm, but they were devices that recorded vibrations on the walls to eavesdrops on conversations, so I'd assumed we had no privacy. あの are they implying that maybe me, Tori, didn't make it out? あんちハローメンのような普通の人間と比べりゃ人握りいいから。ほっとけばいいじゃん。時の女子の講義を聞いていなかったのかね。HMI の発生率は年々増加傾向にあるのだよ。増えてるって言ったって知れてるだろ。今はそうでも、いず
良い出会いに巡り会えなかったらしい。自信を持って小ぶりな胸を張りたまえ。Shut up, Narita. 見えるものには、君の美しさが本物であると確かに。I'm glad he or I'm glad she got that out of what he said. Because <laughs> that's what I got too. Your compact chest. I noticed that Tamao's eyes were slightly moist. <laughs> I noticed everyone's motivation in this game. Uh, at least from what I can tell, is a lot of family backstories. Which is interesting. I mean, obviously, that's like a good place to draw from. It's just your family. But it seems like everybody has something to do with their family. Their family is important.、Uh, either to society or just to them. There were eight famous families that lurked in the darkest depths of society. Collectively, they were known as the Nishihachi. They included names such as Samimaru. Akihita and Ukon. Some were swindlers, some were murderers, some were traitors. There were legends in the underground, and few knew if they actually existed. The Akihitos were murderers, or in other words, hitmen. They accepted contracts and took out targets without any regard for morality. Kings, saints, laymen. They eliminated any and all individuals as per their request. Thus, they were murderers. <laughs> They were legends I'd heard as a, of as a child. However, it appeared that I, I unintentionally became a first hand witness. ネットもないような山奥に隠れるみたいに住んでるんだぞ。誰だろう。でも最近は赤人も血も薄れて、まともに力が出るようなやつは、もう数えられない。すっかり時代遅れの骨董品なんだよ。赤人に限ったこっち
I mean, I wouldn't say so. Grief and conviction colored her words. まあ、だから私は選んだ。この先に待つものも罪深さも全て承知で運命を受け入れた。後悔はしない。己も選んだことだ。そっか。俺もそうだよ。後悔しない。だって自分で決めたんだもんね。成田がどういうつもりで、この学園に来
into Mao. And then we also had some good conversation about our plan to get into the plant, which I'm very excited about. I want to see what's in there. I want to see what's going on. And I want to see how they plan on getting in there. I think that's going to be interesting. Because this is only the first, like, main route, right? Like, we've done the common route, and now we're into Mao's route. And, like, already so much is going on. I wonder how much they really can reveal while still making this a lengthy route, you know? Kind of curious where it's going. But, anyways, lots of good stuff in here. Hopefully the next episode will be just as good. And I will see you guys next time.